Can you afford a house in Phoenix, Arizona? I've been a licensed real estate agent now since 2013, and I remember the good old days when for $120,000 to $140,000, you could buy yourself a house for the first time. You can have a measly payment in like around the $800 to $900 range, and life was good. As a matter of fact, the first house I ever bought was like $80,000, and it was a $600 monthly payment. That house is not worth $80,000 no more. So let's figure out what the median price is currently in Phoenix, Arizona, and what the monthly payment or budget should look like for repayment that way. After we've established that, then let's figure out what needs to change and what probably will change in the market to make things a lot more affordable. So for starters, let's look at what the median price is currently. So if we're looking at the chart here, we're gonna look at the median price. Median price being like, if you get all of the numbers, all the prices in Arizona, what's the one that's snack dab right in the middle? Right now we are currently at 435,000. And what's interesting is the, the adjustments that have happened over the last, especially three years. When the pandemic started, you know, early, what was that, 2000, mid 2019, when we were still like at a stable curve, uh, that was there was about 285, 290. And with the interest rates being at that time around three, four, five percent, this was still very feasible. Your monthly payment fell between 1400 to 1800 dollars. But what the pandemic brought other with a bunch of other things is massive increase of value. And that peaked around May of 2022 with our median price maxing out at 480. Everybody thought that everything was gonna continue to be amazing and grow, but unfortunately it did not go that way. It dropped and then around January to February of 2023, it started going up. Some areas are continuing to go up, some areas are going down, some areas are going mid around here, but we can see the general tone or the, the route that the all of the prices in the RMLS system is the general downward trend after June-ish, which is pretty normal. If you look at any chart like throughout the year, you'll see that after summer during the winter time, prices tend to shift you can see here this bump here prices shifted towards the end of the year and you can look over here this is the middle prices shifted towards the end of the year so it's very normal to see the prices adjusting downward now if you go look at the mls there's approximately 2600 houses under 435,000. now if we look at the um, a total amount of houses for sale we're approximately at 96.59 or 96.00. So about 28% of all houses are under that 435 range. Now, if we look and you know maybe do like let's do 400 to 435, we can see that this is not an indicative of every house for sale. It doesn't indicate all the areas, but majority of the areas are popping up. You know, obviously we don't got Scottsdale in here. Parts of Gilbert aren't there. Parts of Chandler aren't there. But the majority of suburban areas seem to have houses in this price range. But once again, you don't have to spend this much. You could probably, you know, right now I'm assuming between 330 to 400 if you really are looking to get something on the, you know, on the cheaper side. But like I said, for the point of this video, we're going to focus on that median price, which is 435. Now, what we're going to do in this video is we're going to imagine a family looking to buy a house for 435000 and let's figure out what kind of houses are out there, how much money they need to be making to comfortably afford a $435,000 house. Because remember, there is a key distinction between what you can afford versus what you can qualify for. Huge difference, which we'll discuss right now. So like I said earlier, 435 gets you a pretty wide range, um, especially if you're looking outskirts, you're gonna have plenty of options, but you know, West Valley is pretty, you know, there's, there's plenty to pick from. Um, East Valley, it's a lot more slimmer pickings, but you know, I'm, I'm having a lot of people who are looking in the East Valley that might settle for like the Levine area because that's not that bad of a drive. But anyways, let's just kind of randomly pick an area here. Um, I am having a lot of traction with my Goodyear video, so I'm gonna pick out just a random house in the Goodyear area. Looks like the only thing in Northern Goodyear is the retirement area, but it looks like there is one just slightly north of it. That's pretty solid. So this is for 425,000, which is about $10,000 under, but let's just use this one as an example. So what does a $425,000 monthly payment look like? Let's plug it in, shall we, to the, a mortgage calculator. By the way, this is my home buying uh, resource guide, or basically all the home buying resources. I have the calculator, the way you can afford all that. If you want a copy, you, you could go to my Patreon and buy it for $10, or you can just go to ArizonaHomeGoals.com, create an account, 
have a quick conversation with me just to see what your home goals are and I can send it to you for free. So anyways, we're gonna put here about 430, 425. Let's say we're gonna do about 5% down. Interest rates are currently about 7% and we can actually plug in the actual numbers here. So the taxes are about 1956. So we'll just put about $2,000, which we can adjust the property tax rate here to be about like 5%. That should be about where we need to be. Insurance premium is probably closer to $1,400 and PMI will leave it around 100, okay. So, so with all these numbers, it looks like our total monthly payment with principal interest taxes and everything is about 3,062. Now, if you're not familiar with what a mortgage payment looks like, let me explain. There's five factors in a mortgage payment. There is a, the principal and the interest, which basically is the loan portion of it. This is where you're basically paying back the bank or whatever the terms that are set using your interest rate and everything. Now, depending on how your interest rate is, this may be very brutal. Let me show you, for example, if you are at a 7% interest rate, which is right now the situation, you're starting off by paying the bank about 88% uh, for towards interest and 12% towards your principal. So if you are able to ever refinance down the road, which is definitely the goal, you will be in a much better position where you're, you're still paying a lot, it's 78% going to your interest and 22% going to your principal. But right now things suck, so we're at 7%, so we'll leave it there as is. The other three factors are gonna be your property taxes. Basically it gets charged every year and you get you pay a 12th of that payment, whatever they estimate it's gonna be. So if, for example, if you're paying $2,400 a year, they're taking $200 a month from you. And that's what, the, what goes on your monthly payment. The other two factors are your uh, hazard insurance, which same exact like the taxes, there's a annual fee and you pay a 12th of it every month. And there's, of course, the primary mortgage insurance or the mortgage insurance premium, which essentially is the lender's way of, of ensuring that you're you're a decent buyer, that they can actually sell it to another basically provider, which this means you can pay maybe if you have excellent credit, like under $100, if you're buying with FHA or your credit isn't as solid with conventional, this might be as high as two or $300. But in this example, we're using uh, these numbers, $100 for PMI, $1,400 for the insurance premium annually, and about $1,900 for the property taxes annually as well. So this payment looks like about $3,062. And that's the range that we're gonna be focusing on for this video. So right now in this current environment, what do you need to be making to, to not only qualify for this, but afford this kind of house? Well, right now, according to Google, our top earners, according to ZipRecruiter, have an annual salary of $82,000. Our average is about 52,906. Let's assume there's two people buying this house and they're both making about 50,000, which is the average. So approximately that means they're grossing about $8,000 a month. So this for net looks a lot differently because you're not taking home everything. So for your net income, you're probably closer to about you know, $6,800 a month around there. Now let's assume there's a car payment for about I don't know, $300, there's a, uh, maybe two credit card minimum payments of $50, and that's gonna be about your, what your debts are. Now, if you wanna use this budget, you can really go all out and, and, and go in there to really get a good idea, but we're just gonna be doing this for now. So if you're making about $104,000, gross, then you guys actually qualify up to $3,600 a month. And this of course includes the, the car payment of $300 and the two credit card payments. Now how we calculate this is a lender will do the following. They'll get your gross monthly income, they multiply it by 50% or they basically take half of it, so they divide it by two. And then once they get that number, they subtract any minimum monthly payments from there. So that's where they came up with $3,600. If you were debt free, then of course we wouldn't, there would just be 50% of your gross income. Hey, so it looks like you qualify for the monthly payment. Congratulations. You know, it was, we only needed $3,000. You qualify for $3,600. That's the end of the video. Wait, what does that look like for your actual net income of what you bring home? If we plug that into a pie chart here, we can see that $3,600 basically what you qualify for isn't the best case scenario for you because that's actually 53% of what you take home. Literally, your one if you get paid twice a month, your entire check goes to pay off just your mortgage. This is a terrible situation to be put in and you do not want to do this. So instead, let's look at what you can actually afford, which there's several rules of thoughts 
the the more conservative being about 25 percent of your net mid being about 33 percent of your net and the more conservative you know more extreme ones are like 30 percent of your gross i am a fan of being in your net because what you're you, what you net is what you actually bring home i don't want to be playing with fake numbers here okay we're not buying a barbie house we're buying a real house so we're using our real numbers which are net which means that you're actually you should be around this range if you're making this much money with the current debts that you have as you can see 2244 does not make the cut for the houses we were looking for so we need to do two things here we need to adjust what we qualify for so let's see how much i have to lower this to get this total payment to be 2400 let's go down already to 300,000. that's about 22 so we went a little too extreme there let's do about 340 that's about 2493 so i think at 330 we are able to find the magic number 2426 around there now here's the problem with this if we go here we go back to zero go go through 330 Yes, there's houses, but as you can tell, they're all they're either in a retirement community in Sun City or they're going to be in the older parts of Phoenix and Mesa. OK, so that's why we're getting a lot of growth happening in those areas, because just like in California, how, you know, Compton and all those other cities that were known to be rough are now being uh, you know, having all these people moving in there. The same thing's happening here. So that's the tough spot to be put in is if you're actually buying with your budget in mind and not what you can actually qualify for. It looks you're going to put yourself in a much reasonable position, but it also restricts your ability to buy. So that means if you're making one hundred and five thousand dollars, you're not quite in the right position to afford a house in the median price range. So instead, let's figure out what that number should look like. If this is 33% of our net, then quite frankly, we need to increase it. So let's just increase it another $20,000. So that would be about 125-ish. Let's say we're making about $10,000 a month then, okay? So that would be what, approximately 8,500 of net income? Okay. Okay. There are just right, safe, and really safe numbers. We're still not quite there at 3,000. And the point of the video is we need to get to 3,000. I know you're telling me, like, stop now, no more, please. But we got to figure it out. So then let's go to 12,000. Now, the problem here is you're probably not at a 25% tax break anymore. So you're probably going to be like really only netting about 9,000 now. And here we, we, we finally made it. So this means, ladies and gentlemen, that you need to be grossing about $160,000 or netting about $117,000 a year to be able to comfortably afford a house in the Phoenix and Arizona area, basically the median price range of about 435. This is absolutely heartbreaking. You know, being here for so long, you know, being raised here, we were always known in the positive light for our house prices. We were a growing city and we had the ability for people to become homeowners here that is completely gone as we saw with that massive spike in median price range and the code during the pandemic it's just not feasible most people aren't going to be making about 160k um, if you are in that position then great you can consider it um, but for everybody else this is what needs to change if we go back to our uh, mortgage calculator we go back to the price that we were at which was 430 this gets solved with the, just an easy step here. If that interest rate was 4%, we're at 2328. Yeah, I mean, you're still having to make like $120,000 annually approximately, which is still no small feat, but you know, with two people working at 50 to 60 K, it's, it's much more manageable. It's still not really making sense, but much more manageable. So it's not just about the interest rate. Let's say the interest rate drops to like 6% ish. Okay we need to see this median price range drop significantly um to get back to somewhat normal so like even like if we were like back to mid 2019 was and things started really taking off and let's say we just kind of dropped to like may 2021 numbers which was like 392 combining with the lower interest rate that is going to put us in also a better position so that's like let's say we're at 390 and our monthly payment is about 2584 we're getting closer so we're getting closer to that right so there needs to be both a combination of interest rate drops and as well as a purchase price reduction but here's the cold reality will it happen because as we're seeing here we're kind of going back to that normal hey prices kind of slightly lower towards the end of the year and then they go back up you know beginning of the year if that massive drop was happening you know everyone's talking about the airbnb thing everyone's talking about oh, okay sellers aren't selling interest rates are too high but there's still people buying houses right now 
let me show you this chart what's called the months of supply now basically the months of supply what it means is let's say there are 100 houses for sale and last month it took 50 houses sold right if there were no more new listings it would take two months for the houses to sell because there's a rate of 50 houses per month it would take two months to get rid of it so then in that case the months of supply number would be 2.0 so let me show you during the massive price increase of 0.4 we were under one massive price increases like we've never seen before in my lifetime well i don't even know if we were oversee it again this will cause a massive increase now that price decrease that we saw was created because the month we we started getting more listings and less buyers so that months of supply went up to near four it was like in the threes right and that 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 contributed to that massive price reduction so let me let me show you real quick yeah right so there's that price reduction here and if the prices were going to start dropping soon we would still be here but we're not we're still like around two which was where we were in 2019 during the end of the year because remember there's that same pattern as always ladies and gentlemen it gets hot like during the summer and then the end of the year happens it kind of slows down for a bit uh around april boom right houses are selling for a lot more slows down for a bit boom slows down for a bit boom it's 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 still going up we're not at three or four we're not at one but we're not there so there's no indication that prices are dropping yet now don't get me wrong if they start doing i'll make sure to report it and you know make sure to subscribe to the channel because we'll see it but we might have to face reality that if you didn't get a house over the last five to ten years you're going to be in a similar position that a lot of people in california were or have been is like hey we're just going to rent here we're going to live here but the idea of home ownership is only going to come with a rare opportunity either we continue to save and really get aggressive with our goals or we just wait for the you know someone to leave their house in their will for us and it's a bummer we have to pour one out for sure because it's sad but is that the new reality of arizona Tell you what, if this gets you bummed out, don't let it. Because you know who's still buying houses? Corporations. They're still buying houses and turning people into rentals, right? They want us to be renters. They they want us to to uh, give up and just say, yeah, whatever. We know we're gonna go save up the money. Get your down payment ready. Don't go spend four hundred, five hundred thousand. Go get a three hundred, three hundred fifty thousand dollar house. Get yourself into something and make sure the monthly payments are affordable. They can manage. And yeah, you might you know you might get into a house and you're like at twenty five or at thirty three percent, just barely there um, because the rates are so high. But when rates drop, guys, there's just it's mean more people coming out and buying more. So do what you can, start preparing. If you're not quite ready now, then start getting ready. Get your credit right, get your down payment right, get all those things going. If you're ready now, you're either gonna have a landlord or you're gonna be the lord of your land. It's your choice. I thank you guys for watching. If you guys are interested in working with me, go ArizonaHomeGoals.com, check out the link below. Uh, you can also text me if you have any questions or if you wanna chat. Thank you guys so much, I appreciate it, and have a good one.